hello everyone again and welcome to my channel in here we're going to be looking at the point group and this is actually a molecule set of symmetry operations and a mathematical treatment of the properties of groups used to find either the MOs which is the molecular orbitals or vibrations which is compressions of bonds and this of course is applied to a particular molecule now take note that this particular category of using point groups to understand the air moves and the vibration of a molecule we consider this combination to be a group theory now let's look at the steps in which we can use to actually apply our point group of a particular molecule or to identify the point group of a particular molecule now first up in here is that we need to understand that first of all if you are a group of small symmetry molecules in this case if it's yes going here then you'll most likely be in the category of a C1 which is the same thing as an identity or a CS which in this case is when you have only one mirror plane and lastly your CI which means that you have an inversion center. An example of this is this particular here stick of note in here which shows us that oh wait a minute we do have a case where for low symmetry we have a tetrahedral molecule where all the terminal atoms are not identical to each other. Now next one in here is that we have one mirror plane and this mirror plane is actually parallel to this particular molecule on this particular plane over here and lastly we have an invasion center and this invasion center is actually here which is at the center here and take note that this is a staggered form and the groups here are identical to these groups here but the invasion center goes all the way to this particular location all the way to this part and all the way to this part which meets at this particular point here which is our eye so that's about it for this particular group of low symmetry elements which are those here however if not, you are not in the group of low symmetry atoms or molecules then you are in the group of high symmetry molecules and if you are in that particular case then you could either be a tetrahedral molecule which is represented as TD or you have an octahedral shape which is represented as OH uh, you have an infinite number of rotations with planes that are actually parallel and in here we have the infinite number of planes with the H I'll give an example of that and finally we have isohedral in here so an example of this is this particular sticker note that is shown here in here for isometry elements we have tetrahedral molecule where the, all the atoms are identical that is the terminal atoms are identical they are actually having four C3 axes and also have three C2 axes. Next also is that they do have three S4 axes which are the combination of a C4 and a mirror plane that is perpendicular to the C4 and you have six sigma Ds and these Ds are the dihedral planes that are between two bonds. However, this doesn't have a C4 axis. Now, the other one over here, which is what we have over here, is a, an octahedral molecule, and this has four C3 axes and three C4 axes. It also has an inversion center that is actually on this particular sulfur, in this particular case over here. In this other part here, we have a C infinity V, and this tells us that in this particular location here, we have a C infinite number of rotations and in this part here we don't have any line that is actually perpendicular or rotational axis that's perpendicular to this one over here because in this case we have our infinite number of planes in the V sigma location here and on the other side the opposite case is where you have D infinite H where in this part here we have a C2 axis here while on this other part here we have a C infinite rotations over at this particular regions and 
also we do have a particular axis that is actually perpendicular to the reflection plane which is over in this particular location in here so that's about it for this particular molecule over here and finally we have an isohedral where we have six C5 axes one here two three four five and this can actually be found in molecules like B12 H12 2 minus and the BHs are at each vertices of the isosahedral molecule so that's about it for this particular sticker note over here and the next one we're going to talk about now is the high order rotational axis that is those ones that are not in the group of high symmetry so if you're not in this particular case then if you are a high order rotational axis molecule you are considered to be a CN which tells us that oh we have some number of rotational axes that is the principal axis of rotation this CN number of axes that is perpendicular to another axis that is a C2 prime which is noted to be a line that or a rotational axis that is going through a bond and it rotates 180 degrees in such a way that you regain the same original structure then if you're in that particular situation which is because that to be yes then you're going to be exhibiting a D group notation in here however if you're not a member of if you don't have this present then it means that you will continue to put claim to C or the S2N groups. Now as we're getting closer here we're going to be seeing something quite similar in here. We're looking at now first if you have a sigma H which is a plane that's perpendicular to the principal axis of rotation which is this one over here the C N. So in this particular case if you're yes then you're going to be exhibiting the D N H so N could be or well, mostly three four five and if you if you don't have a plane that is probably close to the principal axis then if you have a plane that is dihedral to the principal axis for yes we have a notation that is D N D in this particular part here however if you don't have the dihedral plane then you're going to remain as D N. On this other path here where there is no line that is perpendicular to the C2 prime, then if you have molecules that have C or S2 N groups, we can differentiate this uh, both of them by either using the planes, which in this case first if you have a sigma H, then you're going to be known it as C and H however if you don't have that but if you have a sigma V which is a plane that is vertical or it's actually going through bonds in that case you are actually a C and V however if you don't have it then you go to be the category of the S2 ends and the category of the S2 ends if you're yes then you consider to have S to N. However, if you don't have or if you don't exhibit an S to N, then you are considered to just be C N. So, an example of applying this to a particular molecule is this particular sticker note right here. So, in here we have a molecule in here, and this molecule, if you want to notify it, first you need to be able to go through this particular trends and see which ones this particular molecule is actually fitting itself into so first of all what we see or notice is that this molecule is actually a C4 axis in here and it doesn't have any C2 prime in here uh, because there is no other double bond oxygen attached to the sulfur at the bottom in here and also this doesn't have a mirror plane that is perpendicular to this principal axis so if you're seeing that in this particular case then you take a look at this 
I have C4, I don't have any C2 prime, I don't have any mirror plane that's perpendicular, so I'm most likely this particular case because I have a mirror plane that is aligning with that of the principal axis, which is a sigma V, and then this is actually in the category of C4 V. Now, next one here is this particular molecule. We're going to be looking at principal axis of rotation in here is the C3. In here, we notice that hey, I do have a C2 prime, and I also have a plane that is perpendicular to this principal axis of rotation, which is sigma h. So, as a result of that, what I get is all this being satisfied and I don't need to identify this particular case but if I want to that will be fine but it doesn't satisfy because I don't have a sigma d in here so case what I have is just a d3h so this is actually a d3h so d3h could be in the form of this or could be in the form of this particular molecule over here which doesn't have any top or axial atoms on it but this is actually trigonal planar molecule in here however this is a trigonal bipyramidal molecule in there so they both share the same point group in this particular case and finally we have this particular molecule where we have the axials here having the same functional groups however for the ones that are equatorial in here we have molecules that are the same but different from the axial ones so what we notice is that in here we have a c5 and in here we do have a c2 prime so if i have a c5 i have a c2 prime i have a plane that is perpendicular to the c5 then i am in the category of this particular part over here i lean towards this part and since my n here equals to 5, this is going to be a D5H. So those are the examples and also being able to understand what group theories are. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. I'm a patron. You can support the channel and also see you all of my next video. Subscribe. But that way I can talk to you later and be smart.